Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tyler, and today we are going to be starting a brand new what if. And this what if is a lot different. Like, it's very different actually. It changes the whole character's entire thing. But I just want to clarify Rock Lee is going to have a similar character. It's obviously just not going to be, like, not as good. But just because it's not as good doesn't mean, oh, the what if is bad. <coughs> Super savage. But yeah, anyways, with that being said, hope you guys enjoy. And, uh, yeah, let's transition. We start our story off when Rock Lee is pretty young and attending the academy. This time he is able to use Chakra and he does have the ability to use Ninjutsu or you know he can hypothetically use it but he just can't access it yet. He's having a Naruto problem where he does have Chakra he just can't access or manipulate it and so this leads into basically the same Rock Lee we all know and love but instead he can use Chakra it's just that he doesn't know how to. However, I will say this all changes once Rock Lee encounters my guy who would help him learn to manipulate his chakra and Rock Lee would eventually learn how to water and tree walk and is able to enhance his natural body with chakra. Since I'm pretty sure in one of the novels, like the Kakashi novels or whatever, it like basically says how ninja are able to like kind of have like a Dragon Ball Z type thing where they get into like a battle formation and then they have like chakra surrounding their body like an aura as if. So logically, Rock Lee would already just upscale from his part one self. So he's not only stronger, faster, and more durable, but this time I'm going to say he actually discovers his nature release earlier since, I mean, he's now learning about all this chakra stuff and eventually he would get the basics down and this would then lead into Guy thinking he can move on to the next level. And since they have like an extra year of training before attending to the tuning exams, Rock Lee has plenty of time to train up and basically discover his nature affinity. Speaking of nature affinities, I'll say here my guy and Kakashi figure out Rock Lee's affinity by doing the paper test. I'll say Guy brings along Kakashi just in case. The reason why Guy brought Kakashi is, in case of him learning a nature affinity or whatever, Kakashi could help assist him since Guy doesn't have a nature affinity himself. Anyways, Rock Lee would then do the paper test like how Naruto did, and instead of it ripping in half like Naruto, it would actually just burn. This would then indicate to the viewer that Rock Lee is a fire release user, and this would then lead into Kakashi and Guy trying to help him discover some new ways to use this fire affinity to his advantage. We know that Rock Lee uses Taijutsu and not really long ranged attacks, so saying Rock Lee would learn ranged attacks is kind of out of character. Rather, we get Rock Lee kind of combining his ninjutsu with his Taijutsu. Basically, kind of like how Natsu is able to do it, or that lame ass One Piece character Sanji. Yeah, he can make like fire punches and kicks or whatnot. And basically, he uses this to kind of just boost his physical attacks. Like, he'll just use his fire feet, kind of like how Shinra does, like lunges himself at the opponent and just increases the speed and power. He calls that attack fire stream, and the reason why is because, you know, it's a stream of fire, just like lunging at the opponent and it's just a single kick. But anyways, he also has another ability, which is essentially an upgraded version from the Leaf Hurricane. But this time he combines the flames on his foot with the kicks, and this would then lead into him kind of making a flaming vortex of some sorts. So basically, he just kicks his opponent rapidly, you know, how he uses the Leaf Hurricane. But this time, the fire wraps around the opponent slowly but surely as Rock Lee is moving in that spinning fashion, which basically consumes his opponent in a flaming vortex. And he does take some minor burn damage from this, but that's fine since he can just use the second gate to heal himself back up. So it's only minor damage, but Rock Lee can just heal this minor damage, so actually it's really nothing. Rock Lee would also be able to shoot the fire from his legs, like he's able to propel the flames which is probably the only thing in terms of range that Rock Lee is going to be close to even getting because like Rock Lee is not a ranged fighter at all. He's all close quarters and he only uses this as like a last resort or to get away. And obviously Rock Lee, when he uses the gates, the fire power also increases and this would mean just greater burn damage and overall just a lot more powerful than the canon Rock Lee we all know and love. Now keep in mind Rock Lee is only in two arcs or one and a half because the Sasuke Retrieval arc he was barely in that one, but mainly he's in one arc and that is the Chunin Exams arc. So how would this arc change? Because the rest of part one, 
leading up to the junior exams is playing out the same since Rock Lee had no effect in the story at all. He had no influence in the story at all up until the beginning of the junior exams. So it's really f not fair to say that the story would change because Rock Lee is getting stronger. At least at that point. So we can now move on into the Forced to Death where I actually do believe things begin to change. Significantly actually. Firstly, we would have Rock Lee coming in to save Sakura against Dosu and Zaku and Kin. And this time with his flames, he would be able to just move around against Dosu rather than blocking attacks and trying to save Sakura directly. Which would lead into Dosu trying to make him deaf. But this time, since Rock Lee is a lot more mobile, I think it would be really difficult for Dosu to try and make his ears bleed. This then leads into Rock Lee never really getting tagged by Dosu due to him being so much more mobile and also a lot faster than his base form in canon. So here, Rock Lee would defeat Dosu, and this would then lead into Zaku shooting sound blasts at him, which he easily evades. And right as he comes into contact with Zaku after evading multiple sound blasts, he would then kick him right on his skull with a flaming kick, which would knock him out. At that point, Kin would be the only one left who is being dealt with by Sakura, but Sakura is just kind of getting overwhelmed. But luckily, Rock Lee comes to her aid and defeats Kin. At that point, Sasuke would then awaken his curse mark, and I'll say here, because Sasuke is slowly losing his sanity, he would try and attack the Sound Ninja even while they're down, but Rock Lee doesn't fight like that, so Rock Lee would intervene and tell Sasuke that it's enough. At that point, Rock Lee versus Sasuke would then happen, round 2 that is, and Sasuke would try and face down Rock Lee while Rock Lee is trying to block all of his attacks, trying to tell him to snap out of it. At that point, he would then activate his first gate, dropping Sasuke to the ground and snapping him back into his, you know, normal state. So instead of that weird-ass Sakura hug, even though, like, that shouldn't even work because Sasuke doesn't really care about Sakura all that much at this point, but instead, he just gets dropped on his skull and now he acts normal. And so with that being said, we'll just say the rest of the Forest to Death is pretty much the same for Team Guy and Team Kakashi. And we would then move on into the final rounds, which I'll just say that the Sound Ninja are all fatigued. But it doesn't really matter since they all still, you know, have their matches. And I'll just say the results are still the same as in canon since Zaku would be weaker here since he's fatigued. So he would just get bodied by Shino and Ken is weaker so he, she would still get bodied by Shikamaru. And Dosu is weaker, but I still think he would neg Choji. And we would then move on to Rock Lee's match, which is the only one that really changes. The others are pretty much the same as in canon. And we would then get Rock Lee versus Gara, which is a lot different. And here is why. One, Rock Lee has a ninjutsu. And two, Rock Lee is stronger. If you guys aren't getting it yet, allow me to explain. Now you see here, Rock Lee is not only physically stronger than Gara, he also has the element of fire. Now what happens when fire interacts with sand? It becomes glass. Yeah, you guys know where I'm going with this. Because of Rock Lee's raw power, he would be able to overpower Gaara's defense and make him actually weaker due to him having the fire element, which would make Gaara's defenses weaker, allowing him to penetrate Gaara's actual skin. This basically means no sand clone trying to off guard Rock Lee. None of that is going to happen here. Rock Lee's going to know which is the real Gaara, and this would then lead into Rock Lee actually winning the match against Gaara. And. Yeah, here we go, Rock Lee actually wins this match, and after the match is over and Rock Lee is declared the winner, Gara is pissed off and tries to lunge himself at Rock Lee, but luckily Mike Guy and Kakashi and multiple other Jonin in the room intervene. At that point, Gara would then leave, and we would then get into the final rounds of the tuning exams a month later, which all the matches are pretty much the same except for Sasuke vs. Rock Lee, which is about to go down until... Bam, the Feather Illusion Jutsu is then casted. Now, if you guys are wondering why the Konoha Crush would still happen, well, Gara is even more bloodlusted than before because he actually lost his match, so he wants revenge, and with this, this would then lead into one month of Gara's bloodlust just stacking up until it eventually pops. And here, we would get everyone basically being put under a Genjutsu, except for the same people that were either released or were just never affected to begin with, like in canon, and Rock Lee and Sasuke, since they're obviously fighting in the arena. Now, this would then lead into Gara then appearing, and Rock Lee and Sasuke then deciding to move out of the area away from people so they can settle this, you know, secluded. And while Rock Lee runs away to lure Gara away, and Sasuke follows right behind the both of them, Konkuro would intervene, and like in canon, Shino would intercept, and Shino vs. Konkuro happens. And instead of Sasuke vs. Gara, it's Sasuke and Rock Lee 
having to come to terms with each other and deciding to work together against this beast. And I think that's a pretty decent theme for, you know, at least the Chinin exam, since Rock Lee and Sasuke were already established kind of, you know, a weird rivalry with each other. So I think them having to work together is actually a pretty cool twist. Rock Lee would basically be on the front lines fighting Gara, and whenever Gara gets, you know, tanks Rock Lee's attacks and tries to counterattack, Sasuke would foresee this with the Sharingan and tell Rock Lee ahead of time to dodge. Though then it gets to a point to where when Rock Lee activates the fifth gate, he doesn't even need Sasuke's help and he's just pummeling Gara by himself. Rock Lee then shouts out how this is the end, and he then proceeds to cast the primary lotus onto Gara, but this time he would surround himself and Gara in flames. Rock Lee and Gara would be spinning, and while the flames are consuming the both of them, Gara's armor would slowly harden up, and by the time he gets slammed into the ground, Rock Lee would be shown to be perfectly fine while Gara is smashed into pieces. Well, his armor that is, relax, Rock Lee didn't kill Gara, but anyways, Gara won't be going into Shukaku here and rather it's Rock Lee defeating Gara on his own. And this would then lead into Haruzen's death and all that stuff happening, and the Tsunade retrieval arc would still happen with Rock Lee not really changing this arc too much. And when Tsunade arrives back, she would heal Rock Lee's injuries. But there's another thing I want to talk about, Sasuke. Since Sasuke didn't really fight too much with Gara here and didn't push himself to the limit, he doesn't go to the hospital, which means he never hears about Itachi being near the leaf, which means he never has that encounter with Itachi. And essentially this means Sasuke never goes down this revenge path, the hospital fight never happens with Naruto, and when the Sam 4 try to basically take Sasuke away, we'll just say that Sasuke denies and barely escapes, and the Sam 4 don't want to make it sus, so they just retreat. This basically means no Sasuke retrieval arc, Sasuke is still a good guy, and the next two and a half years we would see everyone be training with each other, with Naruto training with Jiraiya, Sakura training with Tsunade, and Rock Lee training with Mike Guy, Sasuke, and Kakashi. That's right, the four of them are going to be training with each other, and they're basically going to be increasing each other's power. Now with that being said, how strong will they be after the two and a half year gap? Find out in part two of What If Rock Lee Could Use Ninjutsu. So what did you guys think of this video? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Let me know down below. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you are new. That way you're notified and updated every time I upload. Like the video, share with your friend, share with your grandma, share with your grandpa. And be sure to join the Discord and follow me on Twitter. My name is Ty Learn. I'm going to catch you guys later. Peace out. Have a nice rest of the day.